Hey everybody, it's Greg and it's another edition of Unbreakable, the podcast. It is hump day, Wednesday, April the 3rd. And I tell you what, we've gotten about two inches of rain here in southeastern Pennsylvania in the last two days. I'm ready to build an ark. I'm serious. You can all join me. Come on over. We'll sail away. You're allowed to bring your animals and pets with you, but I need two. So... <laughs> So if you got like two dogs and one cat, two cats and one dog, you've got a tough choice there. Anyway, uh, before, you know, today's a big, big day on the show because this is a classic TV day. We're talking about a classic TV show. And uh, you're going to love this one. But before we do that, first of all, rest in peace to one of my favorite comics, died yesterday, Joe Flaherty. Maybe you're not familiar with the name, but Joe Flaherty was on SCTV. Remember SCTV, that great, great show that originated in Canada in the late 70s, early 80s. What a great uh, ensemble. Joe Flaherty, he played the station manager, Guy Caballero. And my favorite character of his was Sammy Marlin. The Sammy Marlin show. It was a takeoff on talk shows. And the Sammy Marlin was the host. And it was loosely based on Sammy Davis Jr. And he had a host, a sort of an Ed McMahon type guy named William B. Williams. That was played by the great, 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 great John Candy. What a show. And uh, one of her frequent guests was Bobby, the comedian, Bobby Bittman. He's sort of like this uh, lounge lizard, uh, Las Vegas lounge lizard comic, played by the still great Eugene Lee Levy. So many great uh, comp sketch comedians in this show. Well, um, Andrea Martin to, to uh, uh, oh, my God, Dave Thomas, Rick Baranis, Catherine O'Neill, O'Hara, O'Hara, sorry. Uh, but there's so many great uh, people came out of SCTV, including uh, Bill Murray, even though he was born SCTV in the show. Uh, Martin Short, who's popular now with the Odie Murders in the Building, came from SCTV. But anyway, Joe Flaherty, rest in peace. He was in a few movies, too. Small but important roles. He was in Happy Gilmore. He was the guy, if you remember, who heckles Adam Sandler, one of the guys in the crowd, but he's golfing. That was Joe Flaherty. And if you remember, Back to the Future Part 2, at the end, when... Uh, uh, the doc is up in the DeLorean and gets hit by lightning and disappears in the rainstorm. And Marty's there wondering, oh, no, doc died, blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, a car pulls up in the dark, in the rain. It, here, it's this Western Union guy who gives Marty a telegram saying that was a uh, Laying in the Western Union office for like 70 years, and uh, it's from Doc, who was transported back to the Northwest. Anyway, that Western Union uh, representative was played by Joe Flynn. So, uh, rest in peace, Joe. Thank you for all the smiles that you gave us. And I gotta tell you about these films, huh? Oh, my God. You know, I really laid into Bryce Harper yesterday on this show. And uh, I, I really, I read the new one. It's just because he started the year off 0 and 11, 0 for 11, and he was playing like the crap. So I said, get your act together, Bryce Harper. And damn if he did it. He had three, three home runs last night, and the Phillies won. Phillies are supposed to play again today. I doubt it. Uh, rain all day long. They're probably going to get the game in tomorrow, which was supposed to be an off day. But uh, uh, 
Thank you, Bryce Harper. I hope this, I hope my little spiel, my talking to you there, woke you up. And if you ever get in another slump, let me know, and I will give you another talking to, and that will uh, get you out of your slums. But there you go. Oh, and the other thing was, Joel and B came back last night for the 76ers. What a surprise. You know, we knew he was on his on the verge of coming back from that knee surgery that he had, the meniscus tear. Who knew that he was going to play last night? And he played okay. He was winded. He was out of gas by the end of the game. Played about 30 minutes, which I think is a lot. Scored 23 points. Really made a difference. And the Sixers won. They beat the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are the number one team in the West. So, Sixers, you never know, right? I mean, MB uh, gets a little stronger, plays a little better. Uh, Sixers are probably going to be a very low seed, maybe eight. Uh, you never know. You know, people are going to be over overlooking the Sixers and might surprise us. Then again, they might not. Anyway, I, I got to put these glasses on because I got a little bit of reading to do. So our classic TV show. This is a 60s staple, an iconic show. And as always, I'm going to attempt to sing the theme song. Now, you're going to notice the meaning, but I'll probably butcher it because that's what I usually do. I usually butcher these theme songs. But <clears throat> now, this one has very elaborate lyrics. And I'm not using any notes. I'm going to try to remember these lyrics. Using my mind, okay, using my mind. So here we go with the lyrics to our classic TV show. Here we go. The Batman, da 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 Batman, Batman, da 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 Batman. Oh, that was tough to get through. I couldn't remember the lyrics. I thought I did it. Got it there. I was determined. Yes, our show today is Batman. Batman. Now, we're not going to talk about the Batman movies. We're not going to talk about the Batman reunions or anything like that. We're talking about the TV show Batman. That was uh, in the mid 60s. And so that's our show of the week. So, Batman, three seasons it was on. The first episode was on uh, January the 12th, 1966. And the creator of Batman, his name was William Dozier. William Dozier, and we're going to talk a little bit more about him. Uh, he described the series as. The only sitcom on TV without a laugh track. And that's the way they, they did this, uh, that they did. It was, uh, they did it for laughs. They did it into a very campy, campy series. Um, 120 episodes. I didn't realize that many episodes in back then, you know? Uh, quite a few. It was always on ABC. And the last show aired on March the 14th. 1968. It was on twice weekly. If you remember, Batman was on Wednesdays and Thursday nights on ABC. And it would always leave you with a cliffhanger at the end of Pink One. Usually, oh, bud, where are you? Oh, I hear him. Oh, where are you, bud? Uh, usually left you with a cliffhanger so that you would uh, keep you watching Till Thursday night, usually Batman and Robin were like uh, going to be killed or crushed or whatever uh, by the Joker, the Riddler, the Penguin, AK, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, King Tut, whatever. Um, you know, I remember I was a big Batman fan when I was growing up. And I remember uh, really watching it on Wednesday nights. Yeah, you stayed up, watched Batman, and then the next day, you go to school, and you would talk about the episode to your friends. 
and you couldn't wait till Thursday night to see what the conclusion was. Now, you pretty much knew that Batman wasn't going to be killed. Okay. He knew somehow, some way, he was going to get out of his predicament and uh, he was going to be okay. But still, that still kept you going. You know, you didn't know how he was going to get it. That was the key. You didn't know how he was going to get out. So uh, I remember when I was a kid, I'd be like uh, talking to my friends in grade school, I'm like, did you see Batman last night? How's he going to get out of not being dipped into the hot vat of hot wax? Yeah, whatever. So, uh, Oh, in, in 2016, two TV critics, one was named Alan Shippenwall and Matt Zoller. I don't know these guys. They're, they're no Cisco and Ebert to me. Uh, they proclaimed Batman as the number 82 TV series of all time. Uh, I don't know if I'd get it go that far. I mean, Batman certainly was, was funny. And it was campy, and it was it's just kind of pure entertainment, you know. But I wouldn't say it's one of the greatest, there. but it, it was it was groundbreaking in a few ways, which we're going to talk about there. Uh, and then you know, in between season one and two, they made the Batman movie, which came out in the summertime, and uh, I remember going to see that too. I was mean, I remember I was a little disappointed in the movie. It wasn't, it wasn't as Good as the TV series. So, you know what? Season one of Batman was the best. It, it started to go down for a laugh again, and the ratings showed it too. Starting to get really ridiculous. So, not that it wasn't ridiculous before, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't really care for the movie. We got to see it before that we were that crazy about it. Was, Seven or sixty six and sixty seven, but uh, be careful to, to what I loved about them was the, what they would call team ups. With and we always drifted because you, you saw that the Joker was on one episode one week, and then you had the Riddler, who was my personal favorite, Frank Ocean, and then you had Catwoman, and whoa, 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 whoa Catwoman. Oh, Julie knew what I thought. Oh. Um, but uh, you always dreamed about what would happen if, uh, uh, let's say, the penguin got together with the jerk. Wow, that, that would be really awesome as far as uh, villain, villains are concerned. Uh, how would Batman cope with two of them? You know, he just about can take care of one. Uh, so that was called a team up. And so when it was announced uh, that the movie would be the four main villains all together trying to take over the world, uh, that, that, that was exciting. That, right? that, that's what you call Oscar bait. Okay. Uh, okay. So next, uh, we talked about the, the uh, yeah, there uh, so the episodes were every Wednesday, Thursday night on DC. Uh, until season three. Season three, you had a, a one night a week, only Wednesdays, because the ratings were going down. And uh, Batman expanded to an hour it, instead of a half an hour. And uh, there were only two instances in during the series where there were a three part, a three part at the end episode. And uh, that involved uh, Joker and Penguin teamed up. Uh, so, and then in, in season three, they added Batgirl to the mix, who was played by Yvonne Craig. You know, little bat cycle. And, uh, now, this is what they call, I think you remember, I, I told you this, in, in the biz, in the biz, they called this the Oliver effect. Why? Do you remember the Brady Bunch? We had the episode about the Brady Bunch. And we talked about how they brought in Cousin Oliver toward the end of the series. And and everybody hated the kid. I, I didn't like the kid either. I felt he was an outsider. I felt he was to, boarded in 
on the family. And I just did, just didn't like them. Nor did a lot of other people. But in the, in the industry, what happens is if ratings are slipping, they'll bring in a new character to try to spice it up a little bit, keep the uh, keep the uh, cancellation away. So that's known as the Oliver effect. And uh, that's what happened to Batman. As the uh, ratings were slipping, uh, they brought in Batgirl to try to uh, spice things up a little bit, you know? Uh, the role of Batman, of course, was played by the uh, iconic Adam West. And uh, another person, a lot of people tried out for the role of Batman. Lyle Wagoner, who was on the Carol Burnett show, you know, Lyle Wagoner, and eventually was on Wonder Woman, he almost got the role of Batman. Adam West reportedly got the role because one of the reasons why he was able to keep a straight face while reading the dialogue. Some of the dialogue was so ridiculous, nonsense, that a lot of these actors who tried out just, you know, Jane Robin, let's go to the... Ha, ha. They would start laughing. They couldn't keep a straight face. Uh, Adam, Wood, Adam, uh, Adam West did. And that's one of the reasons why I got the role of Abby. Uh, Bert Ward, Bert Ward was the uh, was Robin. Holy Batman, holy this, holy that. And uh, Bert Ward is uh, one of two surviving uh, members of the cast. Bert Ward is seventy eight years old now, and he's still kicking. And Catwoman, the original Catwoman, Joy Dubar, is ninety years old. And I saw a picture of her not too long ago, and she's still a pretty good looking woman. I'll tell you what, Julie Newmar in her top, you know, uh, she really filled out that cat woman suit, that leather suit. Oh, Jesus. God, she was a good looking woman. So, oh my God, Julie Newmar. And to me, even though they had other cat woman, you know, including Birth and Kit, we did a, it was a pretty good cat woman in your own right. Uh, Joy Dumar would always be cat woman to me. Um, so those are the only two uh, cast members who are still there. And then you had Alan Napier, who played the loyal butler Alfred. He is the only guy, Alfred Pennyworth. That was his last name. And uh, the only other person who knew. Batman and Robin's real identity, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Yeah, I always wonder, how did they get all this stuff into the Bat King? You know, I mean, they had the, the big nuclear generator there. Wow, I mean, did they have some people come in and work on that and they, then they were killed? Because nobody could divulge the secret, right, of who Batman was. Or did Batman and Robin do all this work themselves? You know the story. Bruce Wayne uh, is this um, multi-millionaire guy living at one of the outskirts of Gotham City, which uh, Gotham City was a uh, New York City. Uh, his parents were murdered when he was a kid by uh, by uh, villains, gangsters. And so he uh, decided to devote his life to uh, solving crimes. And that's why he came up with the Batman, the shtick, you know. And, uh, but, uh, and, and, and Robin was supposedly a high school kid who was uh, uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne was his guardian and uh, so forth and so on. So, uh, but I always wondered, what, where did the Batmobile come from, right? The nuclear and all those computers, you know, Back in the 60s, do you remember this? Batman had all these computers and he would type something in and all the name of it, a thing would come out, a piece of paper, and he would read it. This was way, 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 this is like 10 years before computers were even known, right? Back in the mid-70s. And uh, I mean, I didn't get a personal computer until the 90s. So we're talking about 30 years, 30 freaking years before 
we started getting PCs at home and in the office, that man had his own computer in the back cave, right? Yeah. Okay, so Neil Hamilton played Commissioner Gordon, and uh, that girl uh, was Commissioner Gordon's daughter. And, uh, you, know, you know, it always amazed me how they didn't know these people. They, they, these people in Batman, like the commissioner, had been really stupid. You know, talk about stupid. He didn't even know his own daughter was Batgirl. You know, Batman had a cow on. They, they called it the cow, the mask. So, okay, you could say maybe you could recognize his voice, but maybe you can't recognize his face, but Robin, the boy wonder, all he had was this flimsy little mask on. So you mean to tell me you couldn't put two and two together and know that that was Dick Grayson? I mean, did you ever see Dick Grayson and Robin in the same place at the same time? Duh. Duh. Yeah, they would they flash the bat signal in the sky and Batman, no matter where he was, would see the bat signal and knew that, hey, I, I'm needed. I better get my ass to uh, the city hall because I'm needed. It was either that or they would call the bat phone, bat phone, you know, and it was like the red phone, like you call the Kremlin or something. Thing. And Batman, usually Alfred would pick it up while he was dusting the library and uh, the phone in the, in the study was kept inside of a Shakespeare statue bust. You lift the head up and there's, you, you do the bat poles there and uh, slide down the bat poles and all that, you would change from your regular clothes to your back end right there. So, uh, yeah, pretty ridiculous, but entertaining as hell. All right, anyway. And then a guy named Stiff Bird, get this, Stepford Rep, R.E.P.P., played Commissioner O'Hara, another goofball. Uh, his first name was Miles. Little, little did I, little did I. Know. Uh, in season one and three, now get this, season one and three, the Riddler was played by Frank Gorshin. Now, I don't know if you know who Gorshin was. Gorshin was a, was a famous comic back in his stand-up, stand-up guy back in the 60s, and Gorshin, uh, he was he was a great impressionist. You know, back in the day, Rich Little, Frank Gorshin, those were your two main impressionists. And Gorshin did a killer, uh, Kirk Douglas, uh, 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 clenching his jaw, uh, and Burt Lancaster. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, uh, Frank Gorshin was a really popular uh, comedian on the circuit in, in Vegas. And then he was hired for to play the Riddler because he was a big Batman fan. That was the reason why he got the, the role as the Riddler, because he was a bet he was a Batman fan when he was a kid. And that helped him to get the role. Now he he played the Riddler wearing the green suit with the question marks. Riddle me this, Batman. And uh season one. In season three. Why did he play in season two? Because he wanted more money, of course. Uh, his agent asked for more money. The ABC didn't want to give it to him. So in season two, the Riddler was played by John Astin, who was Gomez Adams for the Adams family. Yeah. Uh, he was okay, but I, you know, I missed Frank Gorsh. I'll be honest with you. I was glad when Gorsh came back. I loved his laugh. I can't do it. I love the laugh. That was another. He was the, the Riddler was just the you know, deranged guy, the skinny little weaselly guy, but he was fun. Um, and then we know that Catwoman, uh, Joy Dubar, was in seasons one and two, and then she was replaced by Eartha Kitt. Eartha Kitt uh, had a great purr. I can't do that either. I can never do things with my tongue. You know, when I was in Spanish class, 
in uh, in college, my professor would always say, roll your R's. Roll your R's, Gregory. Roll your R's. Or I hit you with stick. I hit you with stick. And I could never, ever roll my ears. Never. And then my tongue did go that way. And he used to get so bad at me. He never hit me with a stick. That was a big threat. But he was very, very uh, disappointed. See, you can't roll your arms. Oh, oh, Smith, what am I to do with you? Oh, oh. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so Arthur Kitt played Catwoman in season three. And she was okay. But now, you know Arthur Kitt. She did the song, Save the Baby. Da 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 da. Da, da. She was the original one to do. Uh, some of the other uh, villains, King Tut, was played by Victor Wodo, being an arch guy. Uh, his, King Tut's real name was Professor William McElroy. Yes. And what happened to King Tut is uh, every time he got a knock over the head, a concussion, back in those days, uh, they weren't known as concussions, you know. They were bumps on the head. Well, when he got bumped on the head, he would uh, morph into this uh, Egyptian. He thought he was King Tut, the King Tut. And then uh, he would have a, a lot of crime spree around Gotham City until he was knocked on the head again. And then he would return to this mild manner professor. Uh, some other Mr. Freeze. I love Mr. Freeze. He was the cold guy. In blue makeup. Uh, he had this nitro oxygen belt and this gun that if he shot you, he would freeze solid. Now, in season one, Mr. Freeze was played by George Sanders. I don't know who he is. But the, really, the Mr. Freeze, my Mr. Freeze, who I grew up with, was played by Otto Preminger, the great director. And he had that accent, you know. Wild, wild back then. That was his catchphrase. Wild, wild. And uh, I remember the episode where he he stole the he stole Miss Universe. He kidnapped her, and he wanted Miss Universe to love him. Now, one of the ways he did that was that uh, he put her in this uh, ice chest, uh, ice ice thing or something. I wanted to drop her temperature down. Uh, little by little, until she became as frozen as he was. And then it's supposedly in his deranged mind, she would love him and that, that blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, as we know, back in and Robin saved her, this, this universe, and they got rid of uh, Mr. Freeze. If you took Mr. Freeze's uh, cold collar off of him, uh, he couldn't live. He couldn't live it. No matter even if he was nasty, Batman could not, what a, what a guy, what a guy. Batman could not see him die, so he always had the call of him. And uh, some others, real quick here. Oh, oh, Eli Wallach played Mr. Freeze in season three. Uh, and Mr. Freeze, uh, uh, his real name was Dr. Art Schnibble, Schnibble. Then you had Two Face. Now Two Face was a villain in the comics, but Two Face was never a villain in the series. Guess who was going to play Two Face? Clint Eastwood. Yes, the Clint Eastwood was set to play Two Face in the Batman series, but the series was canceled before they could uh, introduce. Two Face into the uh, into the thing. Now, uh, so this doesn't run long. I'm going to end part one of Batman. Now I'm going to take part two right now and look for part two because we're going to talk more about how Batman came to be. Uh, there were a lot of uh, negotiations about this show. It almost didn't come to be. So you're going to really be interested in this second half, hopefully. Uh, and very interesting how Batman ended when Batman was canceled in 1968. 
it took a surprise turn. And I'm going to tell you in part two what almost happened, which would have changed the world history as we know it. All the history books would have been rewritten if this would have came to be. Anyway, okay, so that's the end of part one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed part one of our Batman tribute. Stay tuned. I'm going to post this so you can get a hankering of this. And then stay tuned. I'll be uh, posting part two in a little while. And then you'll get your complete uh, your complete uh, Batman story. Huh? Huh? All right, everybody. Talk to you later in case you don't catch part one. Have a great day. Peace and love. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Good feelings.